Some people use PVC pipe for plumbing. I think that's kind of weird. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Jake Makes. Today I'm going to be building an air cannon out of PVC pipe. It's gonna be pretty cool. I've actually been wanting to build one of these for a really long time now and I finally got to the store and was able to pick out and buy all the right parts, so I'm really excited. This is going to be really awesome. So, here's what you're going to need. I went out to the store and bought a two foot, well, it was two foot. I cut about four inches off, so this is now a 20 inch piece of two inch diameter PVC pipe. This is going to be my air tank. Got some three quarter inch PVC pipe once again. A two foot section. Home Depot sells PVC pipe in two foot sections. It's a lot uh, more economical than having to buy a whole piece and not use all of it. You're also gonna need a two inch diameter uh, end cap. Be the end of our combustion chamber. Logically, gonna need a two inch straight coupling like that. A what is this? Two inch to anyway, it goes in the coupling like that, and then it has another piece. What is this? Two inch. I need to like label these things with their names, that'd be real helpful. This is a two inch, goes on one end of the coupling, and then this piece goes from two inch to one and a half, and then this piece here goes from one and a half down to a threaded three quarter female adapter. I think that's a female adapter. Anyway, it threads into that one right there. Here, I'll just go ahead and stick it together. I just picked up a bunch of parts. I don't know what they're all called. It goes like this, air tank. Then you're going to need a sprinkler valve right here. This goes right here. I'm gonna cut. We're gonna use some of this. Go between there. Another one of those goes there. And that takes us out to our barrel. Like so. Perfect. Optional. I'm building this gun so that it can take different sized barrels. Basically, I'm just leaving the design open for adding other barrel attachments such as this one that I'm going to be using in another video. You're also going to need a switch for the sprinkler valve. This is just a on off switchy switch. Now for the valve on this gun I'm going to be using a sprinkler valve from a lawn irrigation system. The sprinkler valve is a type of solenoid valve. The way the valve works is this. The water comes in to this side of the valve right here, comes up, and is prevented from going all the way through the valve by means of a rubber diaphragm that moves up and down. It's naturally in the down position, and it's prevented from moving up when pressure is applied here because there's no way for the air above the rubber diaphragm to escape from this part here. There's basically a secondary valve inside the main valve. The secondary valve is a little plunger, which is located right in this section here. The plunger is operated by the electromagnet, so when the electromagnet is turned on, it pulls up on the plunger, which then allows the rubber diaphragm to move up. When that rubber diaphragm moves up, the water is allowed to go up, up through, past the rubber diaphragm, and right out. And that's how these things work. Oh, I forgot, you are also going to need a valve. This one I literally just went and cut out of an old bike inner tube. And believe it or not, yes, that will work just fine. The first thing to do is lay everything out and mark where the PVC needs to be cut. Then 
The next thing we need to do is deal with our end cap. The end cap is where I'm going to be putting my valve. So we're going to need to drill a hole right in the middle of it. So we can slide this thing up from the bottom right to the top. Now that we've got the hole drilled, I'm going to go ahead and glue these two parts together. I'm just going to coat the whole top of the inner tube with JB Weld. This is five minute epoxy. I got another little piece of PVC and I'm just holding it down until the epoxy sets. I went ahead and rigged it up in the vise so that the vise is holding it in position so I don't have to hold it until it uh, cures. We'll just wait for that for a while. All right, got everything cut down to size. All my parts are correct. Everything fits together the way I want it to. Got my valve perfectly installed-ish. And I am going to now start preparing the PVC for gluing. It is extremely, extremely important that you correctly prepare your parts for building an air gun like this. If you don't prepare your PVC parts together and make sure that they are cemented together securely, when you pump up this thing, you're basically gonna be holding a grenade. That's gonna go off at any time. So you want to be sure your parts are completely clean before you cement them all together. You wanna be sure that you're using good new uh, cement and primer. You don't use like old gelled up stuff that doesn't actually work anymore. You wanna make sure all your parts fuse and bond together correctly. Otherwise, the parts may not take the pressure and you end up killing yourself. So yeah, we're gonna make sure we clean everything really well. I've got some denatured alcohol that will help us get the parts as clean as possible before we go ahead and prime and glue them together. All right, there we go. There's only one way to dispose of napkins soaked in alcohol. First I'm going to prime everything. Sorry about the noise, that's my fan. Alright, I'll give these parts a few minutes to dry and then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the cement. Everything's glued up now, 
and I'm going to go ahead and assemble the whole gun together. Uh, for these threaded parts here, uh, for connecting the valve to the rest of the air tank, I'm going to be using some of this thread sealing tape here to make sure we get a good seal. Otherwise, it'll leak. There we are. Let's see if that is sufficient. This is a one directional valve, so we see we've got arrows showing me which side the air or the water supply needs to come from. Don't want to get that part wrong, otherwise the valve would not work. Nice and tight. There we are. And our tank and valve assembly is completed. This is practically the whole gun. The only thing left now is to work on my trigger mechanism here and wire up the solenoid. The solenoid can be powered by a simple 9 volt battery. It can also be powered by a drill battery like this. This is an 18 volt battery as it says on the side. Go ahead and uh, here I can show you. Hook up terminal, one on this side, one on this side. You can hear the valve opening and closing. Same thing with a 9 volt battery. I'm going to power this with just a 9 volt battery. I could use something like this, but it's too bulky and a 9 volt battery will work just as well. I have a switch here. Just a simple, simple on off toggle switch. I think. That's a toggle switch, right? It's a switchy switch. And um, I'm going to wire this thing up to the 9 volt battery and to the solenoid. And I'll stick that in here somewhere. Okay, I just decided I want to add a handle in here somewhere. So I got a little scrap piece of 1x4, 1x6 maybe? 1x4 and a half? What the? Oh, uh, it's 1x6 that was ripped down. Never mind. There we go. That shape will do nicely. Alrighty, now to wire this bad boy up. It works. And there we are, all finished up. Finished trigger. I'm sure you're probably wondering why I'm just so haphazardly duct taping everything together. Um, there is a reason for that. I'm planning on experimenting with different trigger mechanisms, different uh, triggers, switches in the future, so I'm not like wanting to set this in stone. Right now, this is going to change in the future and in future videos. So yeah, I'm not just duct taping it together because I'm naturally lazy, even though I am. Alright, so my battery is heating up for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. It's a 9 volt battery and it's working. It has enough power to power the solenoid. Um, the only thing I can think why it's heating up is that it's shorting out. There shouldn't be a short in the wiring anywhere, 
However, I did cover some of the terminals with duct tape, and I would assume that duct tape would be non-conductive, but I really don't know, so I'm going to try replacing the duct tape with something else or just leaving it off and see if that um, fixes my problem. Never mind the two previous clips before this, I uh, wired it wrong. Ah, uh, stupid idiot. <laughs> Here's a schematic of what it's supposed to look like. Very, very, very simple. Simplest circuit you could possibly imagine. Super simple, right? You could not mess that up, right? Wrong. This is how I wired it. Basically, I'm causing it to short on the switch. Like, how could I have wired it that wrong? Like, how could I have wired it that wrong? Brilliant idiot that I am. Mm. I'll spare you the trouble of me rewiring it. So just skip straight to first testing shot. 60 PSI without a projectile. First test shot. You kidding me? One more thing. I discovered that a single 9 volt battery does not have enough power to open the solenoid at higher pressures. So up to 40 PSI, I discovered, the 9 volt will open the valve. After 40, 45, 50, 60 PSI, it's not enough power to open that valve, which is quite interesting actually. I quickly hooked up a 18 volt drill battery, like I mentioned earlier, that's double the power, double the volts. You can always just hook up a couple 9 volt batteries, three 9 volt batteries, in series, you know, and that'll do the job as well, but that's just quicker for me this second to test it. And that has plenty of power and it'll fire the gun at that high pressure. All right, 60 PSI. First, okay, well not really first, but first test shot. Nothing, no projectile, 60 PSI. Ugly as heck. <laughs> it works! Finally! Yes! Alright guys, this video is getting really long. I'm going to have to cut it short. Be sure to subscribe so you do not miss part two of this where I actually go and fix all this and then test out this gun thoroughly and shoot it at a bunch of crazy stuff. It's going to be a great video. Don't miss it. I'm also going to make a bunch of other barrel attachments so I can fire a large number of things and actually make this air cannon more like a cannon. Because right now it's a rifle and it's not designed to be a rifle. I already have a rifle. I'm building a cannon. Anyway, I'm going to shoot one more thing for you though. I'm not much for conventional ammo, so I'm going to shoot a wad of toilet paper at a cardboard box. 80 PSI. Ready, set, fire. That's quite a hole for a piece of toilet paper, isn't it? Oh my. Look at the carnage. 